I'm Terry Stewart, Professor of Animal Sciences uh, with the Purdue University Department of Animal Sciences. Uh, the area that I'm responsible for is beef cattle breeding. Uh, also do some undergraduate teaching. Today we're going to be talking about what do you do if you have a carrier of a genetic defect in your herd. First, we ought to really discuss how do you know if you have a carrier or not. Well, the most obvious is if the animal actually expresses the genetic defect itself. Of course, this would only apply to the non-lethal defects. Uh, if it was lethal, the animal would be dead. You might not know why it died and a little bit of an unknown scenario. But the most obvious uh, way of knowing you have a carrier is when it's produced an affected offspring or has a subsequent descendant. It may be a grand offspring or even a great grand offspring. Since most genetic defects are, are recessive traits, it takes two genes for them to be expressed and it may be a generation or two before it shows up. The other thing is to realize you have potential carriers whenever they're offspring or further descendants of animals that themselves were carriers. Uh, you'd know this first by pedigree inspection to know if they're a potential carrier. And then it could be potentially confirmed with a DNA test if that DNA test is available for the particular trait uh, that you're concerned with. The reason that we have to be concerned about carriers is if we're uh, breeding two animals that are carriers together, we have a 25% chance of producing an affected offspring and about half of the offspring themselves will be carriers, so the, so the problem will persist in your herd. You have several options if you have a carrier animal. Uh, one is you could just cull the animal outright and be done with it. Uh, you could use the animal to produce feeder calves so they, the offspring would not be coming back into the breeding herd and you would not be perpetuating the gene. But if the animals have uh, some breeding value for other traits that are important to you, you could, use, you could screen the offspring uh, of that animal to find an animal that's defect free but still carrying the other uh, positive characteristics of that animal. So how do you decide? Well, first is what is the breeding value of that animal for other traits that are important to you? Is it a superior animal? Uh, is it an animal that you'd really like to have remaining in your herd? What is the availability of other animals of similar value that are clean, that are not carrying that genetic defect? And then lastly, also, what is your ability or your willingness to take on the extra management do details of managing those carrier animals? One of the things to always keep in mind is that whenever you breed a carrier animal, 50% of those offspring are going to be carriers too. When you breed that animal to a non-carrier mate, you'd expect to produce two offspring out of four that are homozygous clean, but the other two offspring out of four would be carriers of the defect. So after you produce those offspring, what you would then need to do is do a DNA test, assuming the test is available for the trait that you're concerned with. First, you should consult with your breed association for the uh, list of approved tests and approved laboratories that can perform that test. Uh, you would submit either a hair or a blood sample in most situations. The fees for doing these tests range from about $20 to $40, depending on the test and whether you're going to be doing multiple tests and discounts. If you're doing large numbers of animals, you can actually get some discounts, you know, further, deeper discounts than, than uh, the $20 to $40 range. After you submit your sample and wait a few weeks for the lab to send you back a report, you'll receive back a, re a report from the lab that indicates the uh, DNA genotype of those animals for each trait. Uh, there's really three possible outcomes. They'll tell you that the, that the animal is free of the genetic defect, and that's really the positive result. It'll tell you that the animal's a carrier, and those are the animals that you're going to have to decide uh, whether you want to keep them and, and further manage them or whether you just want to remove them from your herd. Or you may get a resubmit. You need to realize that there will be a few times that they're not able to extract sufficient DNA from your sample, and then you would have to resubmit uh, another DNA sample so they can confirm the test. The labs, however, will usually do that free of charge, so there's no additional cost. So in the end, after you have your DNA results back and you make the decision, you have to decide, is that animal worth the extra management headache of keeping it in your herd uh, and trying to uh, manage the gene, realizing that you know, if you breed, happen to breed two carrier animals, uh, you will be perpetuating the defect in your herd. Uh, probably a different decision for bulls versus cows. Uh, bulls producing a large number of offspring, uh, fewer bulls in your herd, you probably really don't want to deal with any carrier bulls. The recommendation would be to make sure you remove any carrier bulls from your herd. On the carrier cow side, uh, if you have the option of, of using them to produce offspring that would go to feeder calves, you can still utilize those animals in your herd. If you're producing breeding stock, again, you probably would uh, want to remove them from the herd or 
do further testing of their offspring to make sure that you don't perpetuate the gene. This presentation was a production of the Animal Science Department at Purdue University.